So now in this video we're going to look at the 555 timer, primarily the trigger pin and the threshold pin, when you tie them together actually. So the 555 timer, and I didn't make a diagram for this, um, I made diagrams of similar circuits and made videos of those, so you can look for my other 555 timer videos. But uh, for this video I'm just going to do a demonstration circuit without a schematic. So we're going to focus on the trigger pin and the threshold pin. We have to power the 555 timer to give it power of course but also it looks at one-third trigger pin and two-third threshold pin uh, voltages and so we can take a jumper and put them together so when you have a circuit that's looking for both one-third and two-thirds of the power supply voltage and it has a jumper across there it's going to respond the outputs going to respond to a changing voltage so we'll look at that coming up now we have this jumper here too this is the reset pin pin number four we don't want this 555 timer to ever reset in this circuit so we put it right to the positive rail we have to give it I think it's just a mostly uh, less than half of the power supply voltage I can't remember the exact voltage but uh, close to the uh, negative rail zero volts that resets the 555 timer if we put it to the positive rail that just prevents it from happening now we want a load just to see what the output is doing because it either goes high or low it's pretty straightforward and uh, so short lead the cathode to the negative rail long lead the anode up one row and we're almost done wiring this pretty simple we're going to protect the LED with the resistor so that goes to the long lead the anode and then that goes over to the output and right now you can see the LED it's actually not fully on or off it's kind of flickering on and off but so fast that you can't tell this is kind of like a little antenna you can see that uh, depending on uh, how I get my fingers there it kind of changes a little bit and uh, not a lot but in any case it's picking up stray signals so we're going to give it a distinct signal we got the trim pot set about halfway 2.5 volts as I said before this is looking for one third of the power supply voltage or two thirds when I make a connection now the output is high and if I do this a bunch of times, so there it's going higher. Looks like it's naturally just going to stay higher now. Sometimes it goes off when you do that. Oh, because I don't have this plugged in right there. That's the problem. There we go. I don't know why that keeps happening. But uh, there you can see it's getting stray signals. And as long as we give it half of the power supply voltage, a distinct half it'll either lock into on or off right there whatever it was right there so it was flickering on or off now we're gonna see another reason why it locked into place so the LED is off that means I want to lower the voltage to one-third of the power supply voltage now the output went high so Pin number two saw that we got to one third of the power supply voltage. The trim pot has a resistive element there, and so one third of the resistance, middle pin is the output, one third of the resistance is towards the negative rail, two thirds towards the positive rail, so we got one third of the power supply voltage. Now we go up towards the positive rail, as soon as we hit about two thirds, then the trigger pin. Notice that uh, two thirds and set the output low. And whenever you have them connected, to that that's what it's doing if you have a capacitor that's charging and discharging it's just bouncing back and forth between uh, two-thirds voltage and one-third voltage and that's just how they wire it up when you see it in an a stable mode just continuously change it so now we can look at these voltages right here so the cable there comes to these alligator clips I'll put this one to the negative rail so whatever voltage we'll see will be in relationship to the negative rail and we can go right there you'll see a voltage if I go to this side of the jumper right there same voltage or I can go directly to the uh, trim pot output right there same voltage doesn't matter where I go so I'll just uh, plug it in there that might be the uh, easiest to look at and there you can see we got the voltage and we can waver it and uh, so LEDs off I want to go down on so within this range here as soon as we hit those two points then the output changes 
So I can keep going, more negative, doesn't matter, or halfway. As long as I stay within this range, the output's going to stay high, but I raise the uh, signal high enough, and then the output goes low at about that point. Again, I can waver around in that range. I have, this is called hysteresis. This area here, it's going to stay whatever it is until I cross the uh, boundary needed to change the output to the opposite state. And the op the output is uh, is either, this is about three and a half volts because it's an NE555 and we have five volts at the rail or zero volts. That's our two options and uh, so there you can see we got uh, five volts there. If I move this to or, uh, 3.5 about, I think a little more than 3.5 if we go to the rail, that is 5 volts. So that yellow line, or that yellow arrow there, that line is 0 volts. And we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And uh, we had some spikes right there. So, in any case, that's why we put pin number 2 and pin number 6 directly together. So they're looking at the same voltage and responding accordingly. So, pin number 2 responds when you get one third of the power supply voltage which we already did it sets the output high and then it's just going to stay like that until when you have it wired like this until the threshold pin gets to two thirds of the power supply voltage and then it will set the output low now a lot of times a capacitor was charging up to get to that two thirds supply voltage it discharges through that discharge pin over there on a lot of circuits so this is why though it's looking at those two voltages and uh, once it's done discharging enough the capacitor then it stops discharging the output goes high the capacitor can charge until it gets to two-thirds of the power supply voltage so you'll see that in a lot of circuits but uh, in any case the more stuff you put on there the more confusing it gets so hopefully this uh, simple voltage divider where you could manually adjust the voltage and you understand the voltage is going to the two pins and what the output is doing. Hopefully that makes it more clear when you see these kinds of circuits. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.